Number 27. The surface tension and viscosity of water at several different temperatures are given in this table. And look at this lovely table. So we just have to answer two questions, A and B, so let's go. Letter A, it says, as the temperature increases, what happens to the surface tension of the water? And then explain why this occurs in terms of molecular interactions and the effect of the changing temperature. All right, so looks like we're only going to be talking about the temperature, which is this column, and the surface tension for now. So nobody cares about viscosity at the moment. So let's see. As we're going from top to bottom in temperature, right, I'm going from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees, so I'm going to be increasing in temperature. So I'll just put increasing temperature. And then as the temperature is increasing, what's going on with the surface tension? Well, seems like that's decreasing, right? The numbers are going down 75.6, 72.8, 58.9. So we are decreasing here. All right. So that answers the first part, right? As the temperature increases, what happens to the surface tension? So we can say, as the temperature is increasing, we will put maybe a equal sign here, we know that there's going to be a decrease in the surface tension. But now we have to basically explain this in terms of molecular interactions. So we are talking about water. So water, if I put it over here, water we know and love is H2O, right? So this is the liquid form because water is always in the liquid form. If you call it uh, H2O solid, that's ice, and H2O gas is steam. So water, by definition, is the liquid form. But if I just draw a Lewis structure, just depicting what H2O looks like real quick, I have oxygen in the middle surrounded by the two hydrogens. And now if we just go over what types of intermolecular forces, because they're talking about molecular interactions, this is basically coming from just what types of interactions exist between different water molecules. And if you're talking about those interactions, you're talking about the intermolecular forces. So... Which intermolecular force is going to be basically running the show here? Well, all molecules have uh, Van der Waals forces or uh, London dispersion forces. Since water is polar, it has dipole-dipole forces. But also, since water has a OH bond, remember, OH bonds or NH bonds or FH bonds, those are really special. Because if you have those types of bonds you can form an intermolecular force called the hydrogen bond. And hydrogen bond is the most uh, strongest of the bonds, meaning intermolecular force. A hydrogen bond is not an actual covalent bond between uh, water molecules, so you have to think about it in terms of a force. And what a hydrogen bond is, is that one water molecule will have a very big attraction towards another water molecule in which the hydrogens will link up with a oxygen on the next water molecule. So I guess I'll just draw it like this, just to kind of show you that here is my next water, and the hydrogen is attracted towards the electrons of the oxygen because opposites attract. Hydrogen is the positive, oxygen is the negative, right? Partial positive, partial negative. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so the positive is going to want to hook up with the negative. And then the cycle continues. Here's a hydrogen on this water, so it would be attracted towards another water molecule. And as you can see, if we start building these networks up, right, this is a hydrogen bond, this is a hydrogen bond, there could be another hydrogen bond over here. As you start building these networks up, the water molecules are not going to interact as independent water molecules. They're now acting as like an army. And 
if you think about it, being on the surface of the water, right? If you have an army on the surface of the water, you can produce tension, you know, to, to basically hold objects on the top of the water. That's why sometimes if you put a more dense object lying nice and flat on water, it won't sink because you have that army buildup uh, there to help protect the breakage of the water. So what's going to happen now as we are increasing the temperature? What happens to these hydrogen bonds? The surface tension is going down, which means that these hydrogen bonds are going to start breaking up. And that always happens when you jack up the temperature. If you are decreasing your surface tension, that means that your intermolecular forces are starting to diminish. So what's going to happen is you're dropping intermolecular forces. Most importantly is the hydrogen bond. So as you're lowering your intermolecular forces, you're lowering your hydrogen bonding. Now on the flip side, because you're increasing temperature, these water molecules, just like we said, are not going to be acting as an army, but they're going to be acting as independent water molecules. And because they're, they're uh, going to start acting as independent water molecules, they're going to start to move, right? They're, they're basically going away from the mesh, the, the bondage of the hydrogen bond. So as you increase your temperature, the kinetic energy will always also increase. And that is always due to these intermolecular forces decreasing. And I think that answer is letter A. So let's just see. It says, as temperature increases, what happens to the surface tension of the water? And then explain in terms of intermolecular forces. So as you're increasing your temperature, you're decreasing your surface tension because those water molecules are moving much quicker, your intermolecular forces are going to be diminishing and that's the cause because you won't have as many hydrogen bonds holding in the meshwork. So letter A is good to go. Now, letter B. As temperature increases, what happens to the viscosity of water? and then explain why this occurs in terms of that molecular interactions and the effect of the changing temperature. So basically it's the same type of question before, but we just have to tune in in terms of viscosity. So as temperature is increasing, so I can just write that again. So as the temperature, whoop, as the temperature increases, we could look on the chart and see what is going on with viscosity. Well, as we go from top to bottom, what's happening to viscosity? 1.79 to 0 0.28. It is also decreasing. So we have decreasing surface tension. We also have decreasing viscosity. Okay, well, let's talk about it in terms of intermolecular forces. Would you think that the same thing is going on if it's a indirect relationship? Yeah, but now we just have to look at it in terms of viscosity. Now, in terms of viscosity, viscosity is basically when a, uh, a, fl a fluid, a liquid is resistant to flow. So if you have a high viscosity liquid or a liquid that's very viscous, it does not want to flow. So if you think of, you know, if you think of a water, like if you have a water bottle next to you and you, you swish up and down the water bottle, the water is coming along right with you. It's right along for the ride. If you turn it upside down, it automatically flushes down, right? Then you turn it right back up. The water is right there with you. But now, if you take a bottle of honey, which is the, the uh, fluid or the liquid that I always think of when I think of viscosity, right? If you flip, you know, o over a, a bottle of honey, the honey takes so long to move. It is very resistant to flowing. 
That's a high viscous liquid. So now, that's why if you are sick, which I'm a little bit under the weather, if you can't hear it in my voice, but if you're sick and you don't want to wait to pour the honey, you know, sometimes the honey gets stuck in the bottle. That's why you just put it in like a, a pan of boiling water or hot water and the honey will get less viscous. It will start to move more because of those decreasing intermolecular forces. Remember, whatever is going on in the honey, right, those bonds are going to start breaking up, right? The, the, not the covalent bonds, the intermolecular forces, if there's hydrogen bonding, but your intermolecular forces are going to be dropping. And the same thing goes for water. Keep in mind, we're still talking about the viscosity of water. So those hydrogen bonds are definitely going to be uh, diminishing, making, let me just write this down, decreasing hydrogen bonding, making the water molecules act independently and they can flow around more. And that's always what happens when you increase the temperature. You have a higher kinetic energy and those molecules will have movement. So maybe I'll just put that here as well. Higher kinetic energy, a increase in movement or motion. But that's it. These are done. So the same reasonings for both A and B, but just a different term for surface tension and viscosity. But that's it. What do you think? I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and I hope you're having a great day. And as we're recording this, we are in a, a holiday season. Uh, the new year is coming right along, so I really wish you all a happy holiday and a great new year. Let's start the, uh, the new year with a bang. And from what we always say, always keep learning. All right. So uh, you got this. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.